April 15th, 2020. That's the day that the iPhone SE 2 came out, but it's also the day that changed the culture of leaking. Hi, I'm John Prosser and um, I ruined Apple leaks. Okay, so to explain how all of this happened, we have to go back a bit. You see, in February of 2020, I leaked the prices of the Galaxy S20, the S20 Plus, and the S20 Ultra. I followed that up by leaking the first real life pictures of the phones before the event. And at that time, the prices that I leaked seemed, well, uh, too high. And because of that, a ton of people just didn't believe me, even established leakers. But, then, the event happened. Samsung stepped on stage, introduced the phones, and showed us the price. Exactly what I had leaked. And it's that moment right there. There's something about how this felt for me. This image right here was the start of something new for my career. You didn't know that yet, but I think I did. I have been making videos for well over 10 years. From Page Tech, the show is nearly eight years old. I've changed a lot, the show has changed a lot, and part of the reason that we've been around for so long for so many years is because we adapt, we change. Whenever we get bored of how we're doing things, we just uh, do them not that way anymore. So yes, even though it's technically the same show, it's still Front Page Tech, it evolves with us and with you, the audience. This whole leaking thing is just another transformation for me, for my online character and for the show. Having one of the internet's most popular tech news shows online, period, is great and I've had a lot of fun doing it for years but eventually I got burnt out, I got bored of having to cover the same news that everyone else got to cover. So instead, I wanted to be the news that everyone else had to cover. Somewhere along the line, making the same videos that pretty much anyone else could make became less and less interesting to me. And because this show and my name are already established in the industry, I already had a platform already had a following on YouTube and on Twitter, and because of that platform, all sorts of people follow me, including employees from your favorite tech companies. You, you see where this is going. Of course, naturally, some of the very first people to contact me were people from the most secretive tech company, Google. <laughs> I'm kidding, Apple, of course. And so it began. I started leaking Apple information back in March of 2020, and it was quite a few things. A brief list includes Apple canceling their March event for iPhone 9, what we now know became the iPhone SE 2. I leaked a full memo about COVID-19 that Tim Cook wrote and sent to employees. I leaked when the 2020 iPad Pros were coming out, as well as other products that week. And I was also the first to leak that Apple would be closing all of their physical retail stores. And less than 24 hours later, Tim Cook closed all the stores and confirmed it himself. But none of that was enough. You see, the issue was, even though I had leaked a few things and got those few things correct, they were easily explained away. The internet could just explain them away as me just making obvious assumptions and guessing, saying they're leaks. Reddit posts everywhere were trying to discredit me, debunk me, the whole thing. Which, I mean, rightfully so, I guess, because they thought I was just guessing everything. So, fair enough. That is why April 15th and the iPhone SE were such a big deal. In real time, I kept everyone updated about the status of that phone. From it being delayed, to then an internal meeting happening discussing releasing the phone in April, which would be weird, all the way down to when Apple actually decided that it was in fact happening in April. And it was gonna happen via press release, not an event or anything like that. And because I had given an exact date, weeks and weeks in advance, this was the moment that everyone would learn and figure out if I was lying or not. And this was covered everywhere because, well, people knew it. They knew this was either gonna make or break John Prosser. Now Prosser, you mentioned Prosser. So he's a reliable 
source. He's got some pretty specific information when he has these rumors that he comes out with. It's not just, you know, six months from now, something might happen. It's very specific. Like the, I think the recent one that he just said was that the iPhone, the new iPhone is going to be announced on, did it, was it announced on April 15th and comes out on the 21st? Or he has very specific dates. So it seems a little one-on-one. -on -one. I'm talking with somebody yeah. very specifically who has this information. Yeah, yeah. The, the tweet which came out uh, a few days ago, Apple briefing happening right now. Like, you yeah. know, he's got somebody was... texting him. And, oh man, there was a lot of drama surrounding all of this. In fact, you, you probably remember. 9to5Mac actually published an article on April 2nd, so this was after my claim of mid-April, you know, April 15th. They claimed that the iPhone SE could be announced as early as the following Friday. The next day. Friday was April 3rd. The article came out on April 2nd. And I don't know if you know this, but 3 and 15? aren't exactly close numbers. So now you have John Prosser, a stupid YouTuber, claiming that Apple was going to release the phone on April 15th and 9to5Mac, a reputable tech publication respected for years and years and years and years and years, saying that it would be coming out as early as Friday, April 3rd. Now, <laughs> who do you think the internet was more inclined to believe? Not me. So this went on on April 3rd when the phone didn't come out, but then every day up until April 15th, <laughs> I tried to put on a show for everyone because at the end of the day, literally none of this matters. It's just tech stuff. We'll do the same thing next year and every year until we're dead. It's all the same. I just want to make it fun. I want to make you laugh. I want to put on a show for the audience. I want to make all this boring stuff uh, not that. That's what I do. That's the character that I play online. And even though a lot of professional journalists hated it, I wasn't doing it for them. I was doing it for you. And before you know it, April 15th is here. I go ahead and confirm the final official marketing name, uh, the price as well. But I then went on to leak the exact time that the press release would drop, literally down to the minute. Just like that, at 11 a.m. EST, on the dot, the iPhone SE 2020 is official. And right there, that is when it happened. Suddenly, the lines are blurred. Some asshole with a YouTube channel and a Twitter account just proved that you don't need to be some big journalist protected and blanketed under some big mainstream media website to give actual valuable inside information to have that sort of access and not only that not only give the information but make it fun and entertaining and the media hated it of course i've leaked a bunch of stuff since then mostly on twitter so if you missed a lot of my leaks uh the link is down in the description to my twitter apple track a website that actually keeps track of everything every leaker says and then rates their reliability has me currently rated at 85.5% over the span of leaking 124 things this year. And that's pretty good. But it was that, that day, April 15th, and the iPhone SE that changed who could be considered credible. It showed that you didn't have to be a journalist for 9to5Mac or Bloomberg, and it showed that you didn't have to have an established track record in order to be telling the truth. And that's how I did it. That's how I ruined Apple leaks. Now, there are more Twitter accounts than I can count, just tweeting out absolute nonsense, claiming to have crazy, unprecedented access. At one point, even claiming that they were at the filming of an Apple event. And people believed it! F***ing what? It's just copy and paste all the things. A lot of them using nearly the same Twitter bio that I use. And most of them even repeat the same tagline that I give, the sorry Tim tagline before leaking something. It's absolutely crazy. It's blatant and done with no shame because they're anonymous. Unlike me and a lot of people that do this, these Twitter accounts risk nothing because they don't attach their names to any of the claims that they're making. Even crazier is that now actual tech publications cover these assholes. Because now, 
You can't just write people off. I mean, they wrote me off and that didn't go so well. And that creates a cycle because anyone can say anything and get a few minutes of press coverage without any risk, without using their real name because their bullshit Twitter account is AppleLeaker007902.10 p 90 x or whatever. And then when they f up and get caught, oh wow, well, they'll just make another one. These Twitter accounts will say anything and the news websites will cover anything. How do I know? How do I know that these fake Twitter accounts can just say fake things, people will fall for the fake things, and then the media will cover the fake things? Because I'm one of them. While making this video to prove a point, I started a fake Twitter account complete with its own leaker-like profile image. Ooh, very suspicious. Named it app hall leaks and tweeted a couple of fake leaks one about a new subscription service called apple arcade plus and another about a super exclusive caller coming to iphone mini had a few of my friends retweet to get the ball rolling and wouldn't you know it <laughs> it gained thousands of followers and the leaks made it onto media websites and then even the so-called real twitter leakers bought it they believed it even reddit who refuses to believe anything john prosser says ever because john prosser is a fraud somehow ate these fake leaks up from a twitter account with zero track record don't believe everything you see online is what i would have said if it mattered anymore there's no telling when this trend will stop or if it's a trend who knows Maybe I've created a somewhat permanent problem in the tech space for like the foreseeable future. All I know is it's ruined. The Apple leaks are ruined, but also the integrity of a lot of the websites that cover them. And it's my fault.